So today we are going to talk about writing the equation. So, thing we've done so far, I've given you the equation, and then I've asked you to graph it, find me the vertex, find all these things about it. So starting today, I'm not giving you the equation of the quadratic. I'm just giving you some points on the parabola. And we are going to turn that back into what the equation is. So today, I'm going to give you the x-intercepts and one additional point. Can you think why I have to give you one additional point? What if I just said, give me the equation of a quadratic that crosses the x-axis at 2 and 7? Why do you need another point besides that? Yeah, you have no idea. If I just said, give me a quadratic that crosses at 2 and at 7, there's an infinite number of parabolas that cross at 2 and 7. There's tons of them, right? I could have one like this. I could have one that's upside down. I could have a really narrow one, right? There's so many of them. So I have to give you one other point to narrow it down to just one parabola, OK? So that's why I have to give you not just the intercepts, but one more point. So if we look at this first one on 3a, um, so here's my two x-intercepts at negative 3 and at 5, and there's my additional point for negative 3, OK? So first of all, we need to remember the formula for intercept form. Remember what it looked like, or maybe you don't. A is everything that it has been. Tells us up or down, wide, narrow. P and Q are just the x-intercepts. Those are just the x-intercepts. This is intercept form. Yep. Intercept form. All right, so in 3a, they're telling me that one of my x-intercepts is at negative 3 and one of them is at 5. So let's start with that. I can plug in negative 3 for one of the x-intercepts and then 5 for the other. So what's that going to look like? If I plug in negative 3 in for p, it's going to look like x what? Plus 3 because it's minus a negative. And then if I plug in 5 over here for Q, that's going to be X minus 5. Perfect. This equation right here represents the family of parabolas that crosses at negative 3 and 5. This represents all of them, right? But I want a specific one. I want the one that happens to cross at the point for negative 3. What do you think I do with 4, negative 3? I plug it in for x and y. That's it. I plug in 4 and negative 3 for x and y, and then I can figure out what a is. a is the only piece of the puzzle that I don't know. But now I can find it. So let's plug in. I've got x. I've got y. So y is, um, oops, drew that too long. y is a negative 3. So negative 3 equals, I don't know what a is. I'm going to figure it out. What's x? 4. 4 plus 3. And I have another x, so you plug it in 4 again. 4 minus 5. Can't you solve for a now? You sure can, because that's all that's left. So that's exactly what you do. I'm going to write that a little cleaner. That would be negative 3. 7 times negative 1 is a negative 7a, right? And then to get a, I would just divide by negative 7. Ta-da! I'm almost done. Now I know what a is. I just have to write the equation. So what do you do? You just go right back to this line right here, and you just pop in what a is. You already did the rest. So just plug in the a. And then you have the x plus 3 and the x minus 5. So our final answer looks like this. 3 sevenths, x plus 3, <coughs> x minus 5. Done. That's not so bad, right? Right? Now, this is an intercept form. If you are asked to give your answer in standard form, 
How can you convert this to standard form? Yes, you just FOIL these two together and then multiply by 3 sevenths. That's it. So if you're asked, if I don't specify, if I just say give the equation and I don't say what form it has to be in, leave it. If I say give the equation in standard form, then you're going to have to FOIL these two together and multiply by 3 sevenths. And whatever order you want, maybe you want to multiply by 3 sevenths first and then FOIL. I don't care. I would FOIL first though because I don't want to deal with the fraction till the end. All right, so that's all there is to it, really. So let's try 3B. Okay. 3B is the same idea. I just have the points at the x-intercepts are at negative 4 and 7, and now my point is negative 3, 12. So remember our basic form. And you're going to start off by plugging in that negative 4 and 7. So everybody do that. Plug in the negative 4 and the 7. And then look up at my screen and we'll see if we match. Do you have the same thing as me so far? You just plug in the, those two numbers. One's a P, one's a Q. Doesn't even matter which one you plug in where, because it's just two x-intercepts. It doesn't matter where you put them. And now all you have to do is use this point that they gave you to figure out what A is. So plug in that point where it belongs, and then solve for A. When you're done, take a look up at my screen, and we'll see if we all match. Did you match what I got for A? You did? No questions, really? It's not bad, right? You just got to plug in the two things, and then you'll be all right. And then, to give your final, final answer, because that's not it, remember, you just take whatever A is, and you plug it right back in there. So your final answer, we write it all nice and neat, 6 fifths, x plus 4, x minus 7. And there is our final answer. The only way that this can get a little bit different is if I give you a graph to begin with instead of just filling out what the points are. So if you look at, um, the numbers don't go in order because I just stole this from the internet and I cut and paste it from different places. But if we look at 8a, it's the same thing. They just gave it to you in a graph form instead of just telling you where the x-intercepts were and the other point. So let's just try 8a. When I go to plug in p and k, so one of my x-intercepts is negative 2. So when I plug that in, that looks like x plus 2. The other one is at positive 3. So it's going to be at x minus 3, exactly. And then the other point that they gave you is some other point on the parabola. So here they gave me some random point for negative 3. So I just plug in the 4, negative 3 for x and y, solve, and I'll be good. To Tell me what you know about a before you even do it. It's got to be negative because this graph is upside down. So this is actually a little bit nicer because it gives us a clue like if you, if in 3a and b, I have no idea if it's up or down, right? But here I know it should be negative. So it's a little hint, 
A better be negative when we're all done. Otherwise, we know something's not right. So let's plug in the other pieces. Y is negative 3. I don't know what A is, but X is now 4. And then we'll just solve for A. How'd we do? Did you get A to be negative? All right. So just because it's negative doesn't mean it's right. Hopefully, we all got negative a half. And yes, that looks reasonable. Another quick thing that you can do to check yourself, if I had, just on this quiz, I had given you an equation like this and asked you to solve it, or graph it, sorry. So if I pretend I didn't know what the graph looked like, and I was just looking at my equation, I would know a few things. I would know that this thing crosses the x-axis at negative 2 and positive 3. And then I look, does it really cross at negative 2 and positive 3? Yeah, OK, so that looks good so far. I also know that it's down like a frown, and it should be a little bit on the wide side. And it's down. I don't really have anything else to compare it to. But if I graph something where A was 1, that would be wider. Perfect. Easy enough? All right. So that's it for this.